and see if we can take Debian 1.3 and upgrade it all the way to Debian 11. So I'm gonna be skipping ahead to Debian 3.1. Oh, failed upgrade. So even a refresh install won't work. So this video is a continuation of my last video where I tried and failed to upgrade Debian 3.0 all the way to 11. And I got to 4.0, okay, but when I tried to upgrade to 5.0, that's when it failed. But you know what? I'm not quite ready to completely give up on this just yet, so I'm gonna try taking Debian 5.0 and see if I can upgrade that to Debian 11. But without further ado, let's get right into it. All right, so I've got the Debian 5.0 ISO set up in a virtual machine, but I haven't actually installed it yet. So we're gonna do it together. And why not go for the graphical install? We're gonna select English as our language. We are in Canada, and we're gonna use the American English key map. And the host's name is fine. Domain name is fine. We are in Eastern time. And we're gonna do guided, use entire disk, and install it to the virtual drive. Yeah, let's do all files in one partition. And our partitioning looks good, so let's finish partitioning and write changes to the disks. Yes, write the changes to the disks. And then it'll go format our partition and install Debian 5.0. So now this will take a while, so I'll speed this up. Okay, and then we're gonna set a root password and create our non-administrative user account and then configure the package manager. Since Debian 5.0 is no longer supported, I've actually got to enter the information manually. So for old Debian releases, you will want to set your mirror to archive.debian.org. Okay, let's try that. Okay, this should be fine given my purposes for this. Okay, we'll install the standard system and install grub to the master boot record. Okay, let's reboot and see what happens. Okay, so if for some reason it didn't install a graphical user interface. What if I can fix that? Okay, I notice it did something weird with our source. I'm really not sure why that is. Let me go change that back. And I, because I'm a bit lazy, I'm gonna comment out deb SRC because we don't need any source code for my use case. So it should be Lenny main. Okay, let's try an apt-get update. Okay, let's try an upgrade and see what we get. Keep in mind that we're not actually doing a release upgrade yet. Okay, now we still don't have a desktop environment, so I'm gonna go get one real quick. So let's do task cell install desktop gnome dash desktop probably just task cell install gnome dash desktop okay let's see how that goes and of course i'll speed this up okay so it looks like our desktop environment is installed so let's reboot and see what happens okay it looks like we got our desktop environment so let's log in and i'm gonna do something about this display resolution okay and i have a 1366 by 768 screen so let's go with that yes keep this resolution okay and let's see what software updates are available and eh, let's do a smart upgrade okay let's install these updates before we go much farther Okay, update is complete. All right, so after a reboot, I notice that now everything on my system is displaying bigger, and this is all shifted over to the left here. I'm really not sure why that is. But anyway, let's go into our terminal and start our upgrade process. So I'm gonna do SU to get into root mode, and then do nano, etc apt sources dot list and then change the code name to squeeze our next version up hit y enter to save and then do an apt dash get update and then do an apt get upgrade actually no i want to do a dist dash upgrade and then hit enter to continue yes install without verification and let it do its thing 
Okay, and again, I'll just hit enter through all these prompts. Let's install the package maintainers version of the new configuration file. All right, it looks like our upgrade completed, so let's reboot and see what happens. Okay, I noticed our grub menu is much bigger. Oh, it looks like we've got another grub menu. That's kind of weird, but okay. All right, I immediately noticed that my login screen has changed and that our wallpaper has changed. And I think also some of the icons up here have changed. But again, I'm gonna do something about this default screen resolution before we go much farther. And now let's go back into terminal do su again and go back into our sources.list and this time we're going to change the code name to wheezy our next version up control x y enter to save oh i almost forgot to do an apt dash get update okay let's see if that helped now we'll do the dist dash upgrade and see if that works yes it does let's continue without verification and let it do its thing Okay, and now I'm just gonna... Actually, I want my default display manager to be GDM3. Okay, yes, restart services during package upgrades without asking. Okay, so we'll install grub to dev SDA. Alright, looks like our upgrade finished. So let's reboot and see what happens. Okay, so I immediately noticed that our grub menu has changed again. Same with our login menu, as I expected since just upgraded to GDM3 as our display manager. But anyway, let's get back into our terminal and check our version. We are on Debian New Linux 7.11. Let's see if the sudo command works. sudo etc apt slash sources dot list. Okay, not in the sudoers file. Let me just get into our root user. And I think this would be a good time to add myself to the sudo group. Just do add user drew sudo. Perfect. Now this won't take effect until next time we log in. But anyway, I'm going to nano etc apt sources dot list. And at this point, we can actually switch to deb dot debian dot org. And then our version code name is Jesse, our next version up. And we can also do a similar thing for the security updates repository, security.debian.org slash Debian dash security. And we'll do Jesse. There we go. Hit Y, enter to save, and do an apt dash get update to see if that applied. Oh, it looks like we actually have to make this Jesse slash updates. Let's save that and then try the apt-get update again. Okay, I'm noticing a lot of ignores. So I'm really not sure why that is. But anyway, let's just do our apt-get dist-upgrade. Yes, do the upgrade without verification and let it do its thing. All right, and it looks like our upgrade finished, so I'm gonna reboot and see what happens. Okay, another time our grub menu changed. Okay, for some reason we're not getting a graphical interface. Hmm, let's try rebooting. Hmm, that's really weird. Maybe if I run it as root. Okay, for some reason our file system mounted as read only. Let me try getting into root mode. See if that helps. No, didn't think so. Okay, I guess we have a broken system. All right, so with the Debian 8 ISO, I'm gonna try a partial reinstall. So I'm gonna select English as my language, Canada as my country, American English as my key map. All right, and I'm gonna pick Debian as my host name, leave the domain name blank, basically configure it the same way that I already have this system configured. Set a root password, my non-administrative user. I'm gonna select Eastern time as my time zone, and I'm gonna do manual partitioning. Select my primary partition, use as, ext3 journaling file system because that's the file system that's already on there. No, don't format it. Set my mount point to the root file system and mount options are just default and bootable flag is on. Yep, we're done setting up the partition and finish partitioning. We're only formatting our swap partition. 
Looks good, so yes, write the changes to the disks, and proceed with installation to unclean target. Okay, I think at this point we can just use the default mirrors, or not. I'll do dev.debian.org slash debian. Okay, I'll have to do archive.debian.org. Okay, and we are not going to participate in the package usage survey. And we are going to want a desktop environment. Maybe not a print server, but definitely the Debian desktop environment and standard system utilities. Okay, looks like a step failed. Okay, let's just install the grub bootloader on the hard disk. Yes, install grub to the master boot record. And we'll install it to dev sda. Okay, looks like our refresh install finished, so let's reboot into the new installation and see what happens. Okay, so far that seemed to have fixed the issue. Okay, first of all, I'm gonna fix my display resolution. Yes, keep the changes. All right, now we're gonna go back into our terminal and then do a sudo nano etc apt sources dot list bunch of my password. And now we're gonna replace our code name with stretch our next version up. Gotta do the same for the security updates now. Control X, Y, enter to save. And now do a sudo apt-get update. Hmm, okay, let me try deb.debian.org. All right, so now that our apt-get update is done, we're gonna do a dist upgrade to upgrade the system to Debian 9. So we're gonna continue. And we'll install the package maintainers version of the configuration file. And install the package maintainers version of the configuration files again. All right, looks like our upgrade finished, so let's reboot and see what happens. Okay, then I'll do it from here. Okay, first time our grub menu hasn't changed. But anyway, let's log back in. I don't really notice a whole lot of changes. I think I noticed some, but I'm not 100% sure. Let's run an lsb underscore release dash a. Yep, it looks like we are upgraded to Debian 9.13, which is stretch, although it doesn't say our code name for some reason. All right, so let's go back into our sources.list file and then change our code name to buster, our next version up. Again, same for the updates, and then do a sudo apt get update, and our sudo apt get dist upgrade. Yes, do the upgrade, and let it do its thing. Okay, our display manager must be restarted manually. I think that'll be done when we reboot our system after the upgrade. And install the package maintainers version of this configuration file and install the package maintainers version of this configuration file. Okay, it looks like we got an error upgrading our system. Let's try an apt auto remove. Yes, remove these packages. Let's just do a sudo apt-get dis-upgrade-f to try and force the upgrade in. Yes, continue. Okay, let me try removing the problematic file, see if that helps. Okay, and then try the force upgrade again. Yes, continue the upgrade. I'm just gonna remove the problematic packages and then try reinstalling them. Yes, remove the packages. Okay, I'm gonna try the removal again, but this time I'm gonna purge. Okay, and then do a sudo apt auto remove. Okay. I'm gonna do a sudo apt auto clean, and for good measure I'm gonna do another, I'm gonna do a sudo apt clean, and then a sudo apt update, and then try reinstalling these problematic packages. Okay, let's just reboot and see what happens. Well, it looks like I have to do it from the terminal. I actually have to do a sudo reboot. Okay, looks like we have another broken system. I noticed that some services fail to start, like for example, system CTL status network manager. It looks like we don't even have system D up and running. So I'm gonna try refresh install again, this time with a Debian 10 ISO.
Okay, base system installation error, so even a refresh install won't work. It's so disappointing that we've got this far, all the way up to Debian 10, the version before the latest, only to run into this roadblock. So while in theory it should be possible to take an ancient Linux distribution and upgrade it all the way to the latest version of that Linux distribution, in practice there's things that change over time that can cause incompatibilities. I don't know how to explain it, it's just a thing that happens, and this example clearly demonstrates that. And it's really weird too, because I did this with Ubuntu a couple years ago, and I was successful. If you want to go check that video out, it's right up here. But anyway, thanks for watching. I wish I had something more satisfying for you, but that's sometimes how these tech experiments go, hence why I call it an experiment. But if you liked this video, and you found it entertaining, please be sure to hit that like button, share it with your friends, subscribe to the channel, and leave a comment. And also check out my previous video on this.